you were telling me a story earlier about a restaurant that you designed in Chicago. Can you give me a little background on the origin of it, uh, like when it was and how you yes. designed it? Uh, let me see. Two brothers from the same high school, they decided to open an Armenian restaurant. And they wanted me to design it for them. They had no idea what I was going to do. So they just hit you up and they were like, hey. Hey, yeah. We need you to surprise us with our... No, they didn't even say that. Anyway, so they... Uh, uh, so uh, I tried to figure out what is it that... How am I going to build them? Well, I could tell that they had no money. So I made a deal with them that once a week I have the right to go to, to come to the restaurant, have dinner for one year, 52, 52 weeks, once a week, 52 dinners. So they figured it out. They said that's too much. So they weren't going to pay you in cash. No, they didn't have any money. And then they were like, no, we're not going to pay you with something that we can actually offer. Either. Yeah, they can. We can't offer you money, but. Or food. What What could have. What, what were food. They, they couldn't offer that much food. But I don't know what they can afford. <laughs> so I said, okay, once a week, I'll come there, have dinner. And they said, no, you can't have dinner. Lunch. I said, during the week, I'm working. How can I come all the way here to the suburb of Chicago and go back to work again? It'll never work out. So anyway, so we figured it out how we're going to do it. Anyway, so they said, okay, you can eat, but you cannot have shish kebab, anything with meat or seafood. So I said, what? Well, hummus, kabule. I says, every once a week, that, that's it for 52 weeks. Well, that's too many weeks. Anyway, but, you know, they, they had absolutely no money. So I says, I says okay. Anyway, we, we made a deal that, um, you know, we hang around before they, the, when the restaurant, you know, the dinner time is over. Uh, <laughs> the foods that were there left, employees will eat. Okay, so you'll have the dinner with them. So that was my deal. Hey, these guys sound pretty sketchy in my, yeah, my eyes. Were, yeah. yeah, two brothers. That's always the sketchiest. Yeah, it's very sketchy. Business, yeah. business yeah. partners. Yeah. It's always the two brothers. They grew up with the same values. Yeah. So they'll they'll scam you, you know, the way their, yeah, their parents yeah. taught probably yeah. them how to scam. But uh, I designed a restaurant. And what I did was I said, you can't uh, interfere in what I'm going to do. Uh, I, and so what to give us an idea? I said, I'm going to do sculptures and all that. In every booth, there's going to be a scene of uh, of Armenian food, wine, fruits, drinks, and all that. They thought it was a good idea, but they had no idea how I was going to do it. I went ahead and sculpted all this in the uh, relief, and each booth had a... Have, I, have you seen the pictures? I have not. What's the name of the restaurant? Is it still standing? Syed? No, it doesn't exist, but there's a new site, Nova. Uh, and they... So someone scammed those guys out of their idea, or was it nah, the family nah, The nah. family continued the legacy? Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Uh, so this, that restaurant, Marvin Glass, went there, and he loved the restaurant. He, one of his employees told him that you should go to see this restaurant. Very unusual design and all that thing. He leaves his card there, and uh, the rest is. He hired you to then, and that's what got you into the toy industry. That's how I got. He said, you did that. I want you to work for me. So you didn't expect that the restaurant you were working on would lead to you working in an entirely had, different I industry? no idea, but it was meant to be. So you think that's why it's important to take opportunities? You never know where they'll lead you? I think you got it right. There are opportunities come your way every day. Sometimes you feel it, that it's important. Sometimes you don't even 
sense it. And uh, I was working there, uh, working on the uh, fixing the light fixtures hanging over the bar. They were like light fixtures. And the phone was ringing, uh, and then there was a telephone right on the bar, and nobody was answering. There's nobody there. This is the uh, during like maybe four o'clock, five o'clock. The restaurant would open six thirty or seven, and in the kitchen, the owners and all that thing, chefs and all that thing, they're preparing the meals for the evening. Uh, uh, and I took, I answered the phone, took a message. Blah, 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 blah. Anyway, so the name is Marvin Glass. What did what did Marvin do for you as a mentor? Because he was already a highly successful toy inventor at the time that you met him, right? Or was had, partnering I with had, you? I had, I had, I I knew about Marvin Glass. I read about him in a in a Business Week magazine. Uh, with a he, there was a a picture, a photograph of him holding a submarine, and the submarine goes underwater, comes above, up and down, and all that. And it says, underneath the caption of the photo is. Master of small mechanisms. I said, that's me. I do small mechanisms because I was doing, uh, uh, working for Bell and Howell. There was a camera company. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, so uh, I took the message. I gave that information that Marvin Glass called uh, and he, they like to come over for dinner. And Leon said, did you take their number and all that? I said, why are you yelling at me? Why are you shooting the messenger? I said, I'm telling you, you know, that's what it is. Well, you should, don't answer the phone. I said, yes, I did. Anyway, so Marvin goes there and I'm waiting at home and I knew about Marvin Glass. I'm waiting that night. I had a hot date, and I told her we can't go out. I'm waiting for the phone to ring and all that thing. The phone never rang that night. Next morning, I called Levon. I said, Levon, oh, yeah, yeah. Who's Levon? Levon Demirjan, owner of the restaurant. Two brothers, Levon and Arsen. Oh, so, oh. You, so what did... Levon later do to your design of your restaurant? Did, didn't he do something? Well, I did the restaurant and uh, I sculpted, I did sceneries and all that thing. Every booth had a, had a story. You hold, all, all can you about, please hold the mic a little closer? All about uh, Armenian food, Armenian uh, drinks, Armenian wine, Armenian brandy. What do you think about Arak? As a, yes, as a... Arak is not Armenian. Arak is uh, more uh, uh, Turkish Arabic. So you combine that strong licorice tasting alcohol with water. Yeah, that's. I'm, I'm not doing Arak. It's more about wines. Armenian Armenia is known for its grapes, grape wines, and wines. Okay, not for Arak. Arak was totally opposite of. Uh, yeah, they're both. You know, you drink arak with, uh, with food and all that. But uh, 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 Armenia is known for wines, but not for arak. So yeah. speaking of arak, just as a side note, I remember we went to lunch with your former high school teacher, one time in a while ago. It was a couple of years ago, and he ordered arak, straight up, no water. He just no didn't want to dilute it one bit yeah it was all it was my family and then it was your i forget his name panos 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 panos, panos. panos. yeah yeah i remember panos did you did you did you not did you, didn't you say you didn't do well in his class or did you do well in panos all the classes i i flunked and that I didn't stop a, that didn't I, stop you though i was a high school dropout so how did you circumvent that with the college and then grad school Okay. That's a valid question. I mean, it's, it's impressive. It, it, it's, it's a good question. Most people memorize everything. 
I was not into memorizing. I always wanted to reason something, okay? Uh, and uh, uh, I had answered, okay, I flunked a lot of subjects. Uh, and uh, algebra, chemistry, biology, physics, army and history, uh, whatever, you know. Uh, I never memorized anything because I had to reason something. If I reasoned, I can solve the problem. Okay? So that's the way I was. And the phone was ringing and I came down from the stepladder, answered the phone. It was Marvin Glass. Marvin Glass's secretary of uh, uh, four, 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 party of four, party of four. Uh, and I said, what time? He said, well, we opened seven o'clock. Okay, how about 7.30? I said, okay, I write it down and all that thing. And I said, Marvin Glass. Yes, I called Marvin Glass like two years before, several times. I made an appointment. I went all the way down there, down to see him in his, uh, to, uh, in his office during my lunch break, and he never kept his ap appointments. Either I was told he was sleeping, make, resting, or his barber is there giving him a shave and all that thing. There was a barber. During the day? Yeah. Yeah, I guess, you know, when you're successful, and yeah, it yeah. doesn't matter when you get he haircut. Had a bar he had a barber chair. And in his office? It, well, next to his office. That's pretty luxurious. It's very luxurious, yeah. Wait, wait, you said he was sleeping? You were just He would just take naps during the day? like Once in a while, yeah. But, you know, that's later on. That You know, anyway, but... Uh, uh, I went to see him, and uh, he, he never kept his appointments. And it, anyway, finally one day he he was at the restaurant. He left his card. I went to see him this time. He said, "Did you do? Did you design that restaurant?" I said, "Yes." Did you do the sculptures? I said, "Yes." And did you do the menu? Yes. I say just the design, not the coup, not not the. So food. what do these Levon and Armin guys do? They just they yeah, had, so yeah. wait, let they me owned, get. They own the restaurant. I know, but you said they had no money. So did every last penny they had go to just opening up? But they didn't. How the, uh, the, my deal with them was I'm going. You told me the food that like you got the food, but they didn't even want to give you the prime cuts. No, nothing. They wouldn't. Didn't they say no to beans and rice? No, no, no. beans. There's no beans in the Levon. No, 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 shish kebab. No lula kebab, no none of those. But that's the best stuff, though. Kebab. No, I'm supposed to eat hummus. But wait, tum they weren't even allowing hummus. It's pretty chill. It's a pretty cheap. Yeah, that's it. All the cheap stuff. Wait, wait, what was the cheap stuff again? Hummus, tabule, baba ganoush. So, did you ever like sneak around them and like be like, no, did someone I, slip I, you some under the table? I would, maybe I wouldn't would do that. These guys really, their business strategy is very shady. They were, I'm they were two shady characters. <laughs> Are there any, speaking of shady characters, during uh, when you were living in Chicago, 60s, 70s, 80s, what what was partying like there? What was nightlife and social well, life? Another story. Let's I know, we're kind I have, of... I, have, I, I was a party guy. Yeah? In college, every Friday night and Saturday night, there were parties... At uh, uh, at any uh, yeah anybody's home or apartment, uh, students, my classmates, and I was always there, and and we, uh, Art Institute of Chicago had also a drama department, and there were a lot of girls there in the drama department, and uh, one of the girls I had a crush on it, but she wouldn't sleep with me. I don't know why. She used to say, only if you shower. <laughs> yeah. I'm not kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I just never knew. I just do this. 
I don't have any. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, so uh, I uh, I took the I took the Marvin Glasses information, and I waited that night till the phone rings. You said you had a hot date that didn't. I had a hot so date. So you, that you night. tell her to 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 get out of here, or you no, say come I rain said, check. I got, I got. I might. I might. I might leave you here. Okay. Uh, and as soon as the phone rings, I'm going to go. Okay. Okay. So wait, what were the parties? Once you started working with your, with your group, you gained the success. Did the parties get better once you, once you were moved on from being a student and you were making money and living the, living the high oh, life? Yeah. That, that, you know, yeah. So, I mean, celebrities or what? Michael Jordan probably was around. No, no, no. Nothing. Dennis like Rodman though. No, they came much much later. later. So, what were the early days like of partying before you hit it big? Uh, students at a, good, a Goodman Theater. But what would a party be like on a Friday? Would it? Would you? Uh, would it, you it, call it? Would you go to bars? Somebody? Would you go to bars? No. Was somebody, was that was bar nightlife going to multiple bars? You couldn't do that in a bar party. You go there, but uh, you go to the bars to meet women and all that thing. But we we uh, I had friends. And friends are friends. They will invite me to parties, and there was always I. I was never alone that in the evenings. Always had a date. I'm talking about. Huh? So I'm talking about. Yeah, always had a date. Uh, uh, anyway, so uh, that was that. Uh, uh, so what was the question, Marvin? No, yeah, we were. Yeah, I think we moved on from Marvin, but I, I was asking how the parties progressed as you grew older and became more successful how how nightlife changed in the big city of chicago then i flew parties okay is throwing throwing your own party is is a blessing and a curse right yeah but they bring their own booze oh byob yeah. that's a good that's good that the theme byob right do you ever go to byob restaurants sometimes yeah. those are a blast no. We used to go to these ones when I was in college in Philadelphia. Shout out UPenn, Fido. We would do these BYOBs. Well, most restaurants would like to you to get the drinks there because that's where they make their money. True, but sometimes restaurants don't have liquor licenses and they don't want to go through the all the yeah, trouble I, of doing it. I, I, it makes for the it, it's it's something unique about bringing your own yeah. bevs yeah. to the yeah. thing. Like, yeah, anyway. like think uh, like have you ever had Moroccan cuisine? Yeah. Well, anyway, let me finish the story. All right. That was that. I used to have. Uh, I used to have, you know, events in my home. Okay, uh, and people bring their own booze. Okay, then I says, well, maybe, I'll I'll deliver. I'll put the, bring the give the liquor, beer, and cheap scotch. Okay. Uh, and some appetizers. And they come in with their dates and all that. Okay? And we'll have the party, and then they clean the place and speak in span, and then they leave. Wait, the party goers would contribute yeah, to the cleaning of it after? Yeah, they'll do it. Yeah, they, wait, wait. People in their... They're coming over there. People that I know. But you mean in the sense they would throw their stuff in the trash or would they after they were like parties done and then they would stick around well, they... if they were drunk they'll just be gone then i'll never have them over to my place anyone ever get really wasted at one of these parties yeah. and, and you'd be like yeah, ah they can't yeah. come back kind of thing yeah yeah, yeah. do you remember a specific someone getting no, do you remember no. a time in any setting business social where someone got really really drunk and it was a disaster yeah like what, any specific time, someone goes crazy, causes a scene. Yeah, no, this they just they get drunk. You know, people do get drunk. Yeah, yeah they true. get drunk. <laughs> what do you think about drunk idiots? Yeah, well, yeah, you know, we yeah. need them sometimes. But yeah. We also don't need them in a lot of times. I think. Yep. 
Uh, anyway, uh, this is card. When I went to see him, I says, I tried to reach out to you so many times. I even came over to see you. Uh, I was told that you were resting, you were with a client, you were this, you were that. Anyway, he just rushed over, and that was the truth. But when he saw what I was doing, then, you know, anyway. So he offered me the job, and I took the job. What do you think is um, one of your biggest victories in career or anything? That was it. What? The, the fact that I... I, I did something that was a stage. I staged it and it was in the, it was restaurant uh, writers, reviewers and all that thing. Magazines wrote about the restaurant and all that. Uh, and Marvin Glass goes there. He looks at the restaurant. He just, if supposedly he never ate the food, but he liked the design. He left his card. And anyway, I went there to see him, and he offered me a job, uh, and that was it. He says, you did that. You can do quality work for me. I'll make you a wealthy man. It's kind of like when Belichick found Brady. Yeah. You know, history repeats itself yeah. in different industries, football, toy design. Yep. So I, I did my best. I started working for Marvin Glass. First job I had was polishing the little pegs for uh, Light Bright. Oh, uh, iconic, uh, iconic toy, yeah, Light Bright. So the way I did it, Light Bright was being was just developed at Marvin Glass. So the designer that did it, he gave me the project of polishing, and we had to polish it so the light fell through. So and there were four other, three other people that were like by hand polishing like this and all that thing. And then you take it from here, polish it there, and then you put it into that cup and all that thing. In in one hour, you'll have maybe 50 good polished pads. And I said, that's stupid. So you've seen the pegboard? I hopefully don't come across the pegboard ever, but You've seen it, right? I have not. I don't think okay, there's, or want. It's a panel, eight and a half by 11. There are holes in there. You push the peg right into it, punctures the paper, and then you put it against the light. You can see the light through there. I put like 25, 30 of them like this. Went to the uh, shop under the drill press, the buffer, I like that thing. 25, 30 of them in like one minute. And also I sense there was a quiet in the shop. I looked back. There was Marvin standing, his assistants and other senior designers. Marvin said to me, come with me. Went to his office. And I said, what, what did I do? Nothing. He said, I'm going to give you a raise. I want you to start designing for me. He said, these other guys that are polishing one by one, they didn't have the vision of doing what you did. You have a future in me, with me. You understand what I mean? Like, you know, and then I just, and the buffer is going, polish this. I had a pegboard, and all of a sudden, I do like 25, 30 of them uh, under the drill press, buff, buffing, buffing wheel. See, once again, you never know when the opportunity will present itself. It was quiet in the shop. Quiet. Look back. There was Marvin. Can you hold the Harry, mic? Marvin, Harry Disco, Bert Meyer, Gordon Barlow. Harry Disco? 
Hey, Disco, yeah. Wait, wait. There was a guy, his last name was Disco. Was that yeah. real? D I S K O, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mean this. What year was this? Nineteen sixty-three or sixty-four. <laughs> he was a little ahead of his ahead of his time. Yeah, disco. That was probably the best nickname. No, no, that was the best real last name to have in the seventies. Disco. Did, did he, was he a good, was he a good dan Was he a good dancer? No, he was not a dancer. I'm saying, like at a company party, would he throw down? Yeah. Eric Disco, yeah. He was Marvin's uh, right hand uh, guy. <laughs> and dad's coach. Yeah, something like that. Anyway. <laughs> uh, any, have you ever met someone with a really weird, bad last well, I name? Met, uh, you know, Jeff, Howard, and I, you know, all this, we were all together at that time. Did you guys make fun of Disco Boy? Disco was older than uh, three hours, <laughs> Disco. <yeah. laughs> Uh, I, I, um, my other question: Have you ever heard a really bad last name that you were just lucky that isn't your last name? I'm looking up what is it? K A R A. Okay, K A R A. O G. O G. L A N. L A N. I A N. All right, Kara Olanian. Yeah, Oglanian. You know, we're going to get, we're going to look into it. That's an interesting one, though. I mean, there's a lot of names like that. Bashi Bozukhian. Bashi Bozukhian. Bosh. That's a, that's a tongue twister. Bashi Bozukhian. It sounds like Hug Borat's friend. Crazy brains. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. There's a dude whose name translates to crazy brains? Yeah, crazy brains. Like he's smart or he's a crazy dude. Terzian means Taylor, Taylor's son. Terzian. That's a lot chiller than Crazy Brains. Who's named Crazy Brains? Yeah, Basha Bozukian. Basha Bozukian. You heard it. means head. Bozuk means uh, head gun, has gone crazy. His brain got crazy. Did he get hit in the head with something? I don't know. He said, Who knows? Wait, wait. So the guy's name changed when his personality changed? I'm I'm just giving you some names of Armenian names. I know, but when you give me the meaning of the name, I'd like to know if it has something to do. You know, I'm born with that name. So I can't <laughs> That's so it. shitty. I'm, that... not, I'm not gonna. Ch I can't change it. Yeah, if you. I mean, I I'd hope that you didn't name yourself Crazy Brains. No, of course not. <laughs> you know, I find out that I'm a Bashar <laughs>